Today on the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast, we are discussing Miss Marvel, Episode 2, Crushed. Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. And I'm Jeff Randall. And I'm Zuhair Ali. Zuhair. Welcome back, Zoo. Welcome, buddy. Thanks for having me back. Uh, we've got nothing but hugely positive responses on having you on the show last week and all uh, being able to give us so much insight into this show and this culture. And just, oh, we really appreciate you being here, man. I'm glad I haven't made you regret it yet. Oh, uh, I'm sure that you will. <laughs> I'm sure that you will. <laughs> we still got four episodes to go. <laughs> I have faith that something is going to come up <laughs> and then it's all going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. You're such a good f- friend. F- you good, f- good friend. That's yeah. I use all your words now. Pat <laughs> on the shoulder. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What do you guys think? Episode two thoughts, thoughts. Episode two felt, I don't want to say it felt like more of the same. It wasn't more of the same. But it definitely still felt like world building, like establishing Kamala's world around her. Hmm. Because there was such a strong focus on her friend Nakia, who like we saw almost zero of in the yeah, first episode. Yeah, not, not nearly as much, for sure. Um, I mean, yes, I, I agree completely. It's still world building. I, I think this episode, to me, felt a little more like a traditional TV episode than the first one did. The first one was yeah. very, like bombastic in your face musical and there were still moments of that in this one but like her just liking a boy and her uh, talking to her friend nakia about like working you know trying to get on the board at the mosque and all this stuff like that felt very much like a teenage tv show to me a lot less oh, yeah. than like the first one just felt so kinetic the entire time this one slowed down a little bit it gave us like a little you know mini arc within the episode it felt like an episode it didn't feel um like just a part of the whole which a lot of these disney plus shows have just felt like a six part movie you know this Mm -hmm. one felt like an episode of tv which you know is enjoyable it's fun yeah i think uh more of the same was actually the direction that i was going into and you just gave me the words for it because everything i loved about the first episode was just carried on into this one except we got to expand on superpowers a little more so Mm -hmm. what they replaced with um dreaming about powers they replaced with actual powers and having the training montages, but still being able to explore a culture and the coming up and um, the dynamics with their friends and stuff. And are we doing spoiler talk now? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert, everybody. You know, with her relationship with Nakia, like, we find out how important that is that she's actually considering, like, sharing the secret. Like, Bruno says, like, we have secrets for a re or they have secret identities for a reason but now we see like how important she actually is to her that she's actually contemplating like wanting to tell her because if bruno wasn't there to witness all of that maybe if she wouldn't have told him maybe she would have told both of them at the same time but these dynamics and relationships between everybody that's going to be going forward in the story was expanded on quite a bit and yeah i loved every every second of this yeah for sure I am kind of surprised she didn't tell Nakia because I don't yeah. know. It felt like she should almost like they're they're close. I don't know that there's a reason she shouldn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, Nakia is going to be mad when she does finally find out. Yeah, that's definitely building up to a rift of some sort. Yeah, she's like, you. she's going to be like, you waited this long to tell me? Bruno, you knew? You told Bruno? <laughs> well, Bruno was there when it happened. <laughs> we don't even talk about him. <laughs> 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 but um, Tis... <laughs> Who are y'all talking about? I only know about Brian. <laughs> Brian's <laughs> mad. Why is Brian mad? <laughs> I love that so much. Uh, uh, I was like, we have line. a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of Asians of all sorts that got out of the car, and of course, the one white guy got his name wrong. And I was like, how the tables have turned? <laughs> oh, how the turntables have turned! <laughs> <laughs> I yep. love it. I loved it. I, you know, I I was I was kind of I was excited, I guess, that that like there was a, a love interest that like was you know like a hot dude for lack of a better term, but wasn't a jock idiot. Yeah. So like we didn't have the like the story of the nerdy girl falling in love with the jock idiot kind of thing mm-hmm. that is so cliche. Like he got out of the car, he remembered everybody's names. Yeah. Bruno's. Yeah, it wasn't the male gaze of like, look at the 
girl falling in love with the guy she shouldn't fall in love with Fr- from the perspective of, the, of, of Kamala, it, it felt like the story was being told and you're like, yeah, I totally get it. This guy's, this guy's like hot and fun and like funny and cute. And he's like connecting with her on a cool level. And you see it in face. I love everything that, um, the the actress who plays Kamala was doing like she just she just totally hammed it up in a way that like really made me see like all of her emotions on her face that dance sequence was everything oh I, my god yes I, I I know what I get what they were doing but like I really wanted her parents to join in and make it like a full on Bollywood scene you know like just like okay you said it yeah <laughs> yeah oh man when I she was like say it or I will because that is definitely yeah. a Bollywood moment right Absolutely. there that I have had myself <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I don't know much i don't know much bollywood but i don't i don't know if they use like other songs much. like that Sorry. ever or if it's if it's generally original songs or songs from uh like american culture or whatever but like her doing that very like bollywood dance to that that song uh be my little baby like it's just so much fun <laughs> but when she when she grabbed the refrigerator i thought for sure because the music swelled as she approached the refrigerator i thought for sure it was we were going to go into a full fantasy sequence that her parents were going to dance with her you know I, but it didn't do that <laughs> oh see i was scared that she went past her curfew or something and it was gonna like de-escalate but then she was just like magical and went right back into it and like, that's <laughs> everything about like Disney musical scenes and everything about Bollywood that was just great. Yeah. Yep. 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 I God, I was I was also worried too that it was going to be like, and this happy moment just crashed yeah. because, mm. oops, it's nine oh five or whatever. Yep. Like, but no, they were just like, hey, how was how was your thing? And like, I love that you know when she when she like slams her hands against the window and like starts the dance and everything like <laughs> the lighting is changed yep. it's like super dramatic but then when she opens the fridge and they're like hey how was your thing it's just normal like yeah, baseline yeah. they probably dialed it down a bit like made it a little a little less extreme yeah just, totally like, to really like sharpen that contrast mm-hmm. it was so good just bring it her back so to the earth great. for a second oh it's so good I was so happy with that. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, her being like brought deck down to earth from that happy feeling, like, uh, you know, there's th- this episode's called crushed. And I think it's like three different meanings there. Like there's the, well, t- two that I think are more meaningful in one. Uh, uh, she, she gets, uh, she gets a crush, but then also at the end of the episode, I think she's a little crushed that like, he's not, on the level like there's something going on here he picks her up in the car and his mom's in the back seat and like so was he may have not been getting to know her at all for you know any kind of like real reason he's getting to know her to figure to like spy on her find out what's going on with this bangle like i don't know yep. interesting well there was also um you know right before that when she was trying to save the kid and like the kid almost died mm-hmm. um she fell on him yeah he fell on her he fell on her and then like right after that when you know she had the vision or whatever uh, and she was throwing the things down to like break the kid's fall like right after that she was like oh my god and like had this look of of just despair Mm. like everything that i thought i was just came crashing down yeah it looked like her hopes were a bit crushed yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so there's your third meaning well i was gonna it's the third meaning i was gonna say is when she actually has the guy fall on her and she's oh, yeah, like she's i got physically him. actually crushed yeah she was physically i was like watching it the second time looking for what that meant and i was like well there's one <laughs> <laughs> thankfully the kid's spine wasn't crushed yes oh, yeah. yes indeed yes indeed but his ankle may have been he's like my ankle and eh, that's fine was he the shoe thief <laughs> uh not that we know did we did we there was there a clue to that I don't think so. No, somebody had just messaged me saying was that the shoe thief, but like I totally forgot about that because shoe thieves and environments like that are very common. I've had plenty of shoes stolen from me. Mm. Ever since I hit a growth spurt, like I actually put my shoes like on the tallest things because nobody else there is tall. Ha ha ha. So if my shoes clearly aren't in, like one particular spot, it's like, oh, someone went out of the way to get that. Um, but because there was so much emphasis like on the feet and he was being mischievous, like I was wondering if oh. anybody else caught Versace shoes. Uh, it no, didn't, I didn't look like so. he was being mischievous. He, it, like he just went up there to <laughs> take a to do Instagram selfie. filters. Yeah, I don't think he was, you're supposed to be up there. <laughs> he was doing 
Yeah, he was doing stupid selfie with filters and whatnot. Yeah, and <laughs> the other thing, like he's t- trying to take this selfie where he's like falling off the building. Like that's what he's doing. He's like, "Oh, look at me, I'm hang dangling." But then he puts the filter on, and the helmets are like covering up the whole background. I was like, "What are you doing? This is just <laughs> this is poor Instagramming." Was it worth it? <laughs> it looked like he was just trying to get the ang- like not looking like he was falling because it looked like he was just kind of right 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 sitting on the edge of it just like yeah look at this view i got out of the top i'm in the tower baby he was like a good 45 degrees out the window when he finally dropped his phone like he was leaning out like he was trying to get it like yeah. straight above him like he was trying to look like i'm f- either you know maybe not falling but like i'm i'm floating above the city or look above how this high party. up i am yeah, yeah that sort of thing and then he dropped his phone like an idiot yeah because he didn't have a pop socket. <laughs> so they're crushed. The phone was crushed. <laughs> the phone was crushed. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find so many <laughs> meetings. <laughs> I got I to gotta mention, there was a clear Marty McFly cosplay happening in this episode, oh, yeah. right? I, I was like, the first time watching it, I was like, this is Marty. He he's Marty. This McFly feels right a lot now. like Marty McFly. He's Marty McFly right now. Uh, Bruno at one point is wearing a blue shirt, blue long sleeve shirt with a blue shirt under it, which in in Marty McFly's outfit that's a jean jacket, but still it's like a blue a blue t- upper outfit with like jeans and then an orange vest over it and yep. then his hair was kind of similar and then he had an orange backpack. It was like everything was straight up Marty McFly. I was like. That's got to be on preserver. purpose. You mean his? You mean his life preserver? Right. In, in the movie, it's a life preserver, but here it was just like a puffy vest. But it was clearly that that had yep. to have been a on purpose thing. Had to have been. <laughs> Nothing else it could have been. I, I can't see anything. It had to be. That's that's, to that's be. a lot of uh, coincidences. Yep. <laughs> so, man, I I like. There's a lot of like Miss Marvel comic mythos that happened in this episode that I, mm. I, I don't want to immediately jump to because we need to talk about, you know, the things that actually happened in the episode. Okay. But just remember, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> okay. With that upcoming. Well, while we're talking about Bruno, we don't, I couldn't word it any other way. <laughs> 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 oh, what about all the stuff with Caltech? Like, do you think he's actually going to, go to mm. that despite everything being free or is love going to keep him in jersey mm. uh, i don't know I, I don't think it's i don't think it's i still don't want to think it's love you know like i think it's just whether a, it's romantic love or friendship love like yeah he yeah. wants to be the guy in the chair or he needs to be the guy in the chair. Yeah. I, He's going to see. There's, there's definitely, he has, there's definitely at this point, I'm pretty confident there's feelings coming from his side, like romantic yeah. feelings coming from his side. Maybe. How upset he was at Comron and like all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. When Comron was like, you, you can drive it sometimes. No, she can't. She just failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just really upset. And then and then when she's trying to get in the car with right when she's heading to the car with Comron, he's like, I need to talk to you about something. And I, it's got to be like yep. him being like, I got to take I got to shoot my shot now before she. I don't think that's what that was. Oh, I totally I think, think that's what that was. Absolutely not. What do you think she's trying to talk to him about? Because that was right after his Caltech conversation. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I still i still i still maintain i think like that conversation is i have this but i also have feelings for you and i don't really want to leave like i think that's part of the conversation I feel like that could come down the road i don't know i i definitely think that it's a i don't want to leave you know what's going on here especially with you being a new superhero right and me being a guy in the chair and doing all the analysis mm-hmm. for you like he doesn't want to leave that yeah but I, I don't I don't know that he's going to admit immediately that it'll be also mm-hmm. romantic feelings. That may be. And then it's also really difficult for him because, like, Caltech is too good to be true for him. Yeah. Because yeah. whatever family issue financial... Like, he was thinking of all the reasons not to go right at the back. He wasn't excited. He wasn't, like, right in the mm-hmm. high of it at all. And, you mm-hmm. know, he was like, I'm your Meryl Street. This is where you say yes. <laughs> yeah. Like that, all that was hilarious. But like, for him to just be like, I'm used to not 
getting anywhere. I'm used to being in this financial situation. Like, this is the norm for me. I'm just going to stay in this bubble. And he's trying to find all the reasons to stay in that bubble because obviously, like, it'll be great for him and his school is trying to get him to pursue this. But that that is a problem, honestly, no matter how old you are, that you're so used to the environment that you're in that you can clearly see that there's something better for you out there. And it's so difficult to just make that step. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm so used to being, you know, financially incapable of of doing anything. So when it's provided for me, there's obviously a catch. Something yeah. is wrong. I'm not used to good things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to do anything about or with that. So obviously I yeah. don't need to I don't need to engage with it because there's no way it's real. Yeah. La 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 la. Don't <laughs> it's uh, this conversation became too real. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> but I think it also goes for any situation you're in. It can be a relationship, it can be all kinds of things where you're like it's time for a change. I see better world outdoors of this thing I'm in, but this is the world mm-hmm. I know. I'm staying here. Is this comfort zone? You know, and I, I yep. so for the, all of those reasons, I think the counselor's right. I think like he needs to go. He needs to do this for himself. Oh, yeah. um, no matter what he wants to be for Kamala, um, I think he, I think for himself he needs to go do that. And maybe even to be a more efficient guy in the chair, he needs to go learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's doing her training. He needs to go to his. Not only, but also, I would bet, <laughs> I would bet that if he were to go to Caltech, he would likely end up in the Ironheart series. That would be I neat. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Like, what if he builds the next, like, the next Jarvis? Man, yeah. he could be some connective tissue that could start bringing the sort of Young Avengers stuff together. Um, that's, or, that's not a bad idea champions uh miss marvel was part of champions right whatever team she was also an inhuman so yeah (laughs) we'll talk about that (laughs) well let's talk about it uh they say that the bangle is drawing power from the inside not the outside it unlocked her superhuman ability Mm -hmm. and i'm like don't you mean inhuman abilities (laughs) and another thor reference point so i dig that uh Sorry, sorry, Jeff. No, it's fine. <laughs> That's another cast. I'm not. No. <laughs> You're a part of this too. Is it? Let's keep this fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who came up with the order. It's all your fault. <laughs> I used a randomizer. Dang it! <laughs> you randomized it wrong. Damn it! <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, stick around. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a an update on the fantasy league after Miss Marvel happens. Yeah, we are. My goodness, Kingo reference points. Yep, uh, Kingo reference points for sure. Dude, I was so focused on the Sharukan stuff, and I was digging that so much that I totally missed the Kingo stuff. Oh, right, right. Not only Kingo, but also Kingo Sr. Yep. Yeah. So is that kind of two references to Kingo? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't either. I'm just joking. <laughs> Another cast. That's, yeah, that's, we got to bring Sarah Day in for that one. Yep, yep. Another cast. In the comics, Kamran was... Uh, is it gonna be a spoilery? Because yes, I, I feel like we maybe should we wait. should give a give a heads we up. Should because, wait. Or, okay, wait till the end to to give like really big. Com- but w- one thing I do think is pretty com- confidently we could say is that her powers coming from the inside of her means that it might be we might still be tracking to like an inhuman uh, origin story or something like it. If yeah. if if she has powers from something that's in her blood that is being unlocked just like in age yep. of shield even though you know in uh in humans they breathed in the the crystals in agents of shield it started as that uh obelisk or whatever you know mm-hmm. and then here that could be what the uh bangle is you know maybe you wear the bangle and you unlock your powers we were talking about last week about how, like, the design of her, like, projection is actually in the shape of Terrigen Crystal, so maybe there is one, like, in the bangle, or, like, the bangle is made from Terrigen of some sort. Yeah, it could be. possible, but it, if that's the case, that I mean, yeah, it, it, that's possible, but, it, like, her power, if this is her power anyway, then this is her power with or without, like, yeah, not all, not all human powers re- resemble... Terrigen crystals. Does that make sense? So Terrigen comes from India? <laughs> it seems like it. it seems like it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's definitely it. <laughs> Terrigen made in India. <laughs> I've got it. I've got a theory. What's your theory? Uh, no, it's it's for the it's for the. I'll, I'll well, put a pin in that one. Well, okay. What else do we want to talk about before we dive into that that thing? So, what the hell is going on with the bangle like activating and making her yeah. see another or like it looks like it opens a a, a portal almost mm-hmm. right. Where, yeah, it's clearly giving her glimpses of the past. It seems like that first one she sees looks like the it's when she, they're talking about the train station and it looks like that uh lady she sees is standing on a, a train platform, I thought. Um Yeah, I'm wondering mm, if that's her great grandmother like trying to communicate with I her. I think so. That's what I'm thinking. I think whatever this bangle she was, is she was reaching out toward her in the second one just like grab yeah. my hand, Bollywood. That is that, is, is that seemed Bollywoodish as well little bit <laughs> okay cool. especially because the movie that they were talking about um when they were talking about old bollywood movies which absolutely loved all of that they were talking about how there's this one movie ddlj that's like very overrated and the end moving is just like a lot to do with trains and oh. i agree that the movie is very overrated and you can fight <laughs> me on that <laughs> okay um mohammed is the best charu khan movie and you can't tell me otherwise anyways mm. uh so yeah there was like just little <laughs> elements of that that i thought was really cool yeah that's that's rad i thought you meant with like the seeing through the portal type thing yeah i i see like remnants of that because they okay. talk about the train they you see her outfit they talk about the story of like the partition and stuff like that so there's just kind of like that i okay, don't want to so- say over dramatic but they have like the elements of that of her like being high and on the train in the outfit reaching out like this this is the essence of it just kind of had that little gotcha. bollywood sizzle to it you know when they when they say when you say they talk about the uh partition you mean in ddlj is it about the partition oh no 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 okay I'm just talking about, sorry like just that there's the, just train that was that was that was a that was me just diverting on something else but yeah there was the trains were a big part of the movie um, gotcha. Especially the end scene of it, the like the iconic scene. Like you said, they mentioned DDLJ. They mentioned a few other movies. If those movies relate to what's going on here at all, you know, like sometimes people will drop a reference to a movie that this is sort of like based on, or they're drawing inspiration from. Yeah, so. I think it's more of like influence on what you would expect from those type of movies. I guess the the dramatization of her like having her hand out through the portal was very Bollywood to me. I feel, I feel like there's something else that I'm like forgetting what but there's something else that uses a similar like look into the past and she's they sort of like see through a crack in time and like reach out and i'm like what is it deja vu with denzel washington Uh, yeah i don't know that i've seen it but it's been too many years that's not what i'm thinking i might be thinking of like some dceu stuff with like the flash reaching through but that's not i don't think that's it flash one paradox uh no i'm thinking of like dceu when he reaches through to like find batman or whatever in the uh Batman yeah. v Superman. Did, did I did I go too far back? Yeah. Oh no, I went yeah. too far back. Oh, you did watch that one. <laughs> what? Jeff Cena DC? <laughs> that was the last one. <laughs> I just I got to throw some love to the Illuminantes. Illuminantes. Oh, <laughs> that is that is wonderful. <laughs> that whole bit of all the clicks had me dying. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. It, you know, it felt like it felt almost like a heist planning kind of yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. It, it was like, all right, here's how it's gonna go down. Here's the plan. You're gonna go over there and, and like you're gonna you're gonna talk with the the mosque boys. And yeah. <laughs> You know, or was it? No, there's some Moss Bros. I love, I love this for the sort of lack of a better term, demystification of a mosque, like mm-hmm. just showing the people in it. It, it looks like any. I, I, I must. I went to grow up in a Southern Baptist church, and like it's the same stuff. You know, the click of the oh yeah, this and the click, the click of the kids, the click of the cool kids, the you know whatever. I, we didn't have phones back then, but uh, you know, like whatever the cool yeah, kids. You the would sort have of been on Instagram. Kids, I was definitely the ones that were keeping the halal gap. Uh. Yeah. And the fact that they actually mentioned that there was like there's there's two Eids and one is like a quote unquote lesser Eid and the like the Eid that ends Ramadan was just recently but this lesser Eid is actually the second week of July so it's actually coming up like close to when the show will be wrapping up. Huh. Okay. So we have uh, a so- we have a firm placement in like when in the year this show is happening. 
Yeah, because uh, Islamic holidays run off of the lunar calendar year, so all of our holidays are on different times of the year, so planning is very difficult. Uh, but that but that little festival that they had is called the Eid Mela, and it's very customary um, just to have a day of like celebration and food and games and all that good stuff. So it was cool okay. like, just seeing how they did that. Gotcha. Uh, but yes, you will get smacked if you have your phone in a prayer hall. <laughs> oh, they have no chill on that. <laughs> yeah. We had to leave ours in the car or our parents would like take it before we went in. So then we would like get in trouble, like uh, just trying to whisper or pass notes or stuff like that. I would figure it's, it would be more difficult uh, for you being in front of the partition. Cause you're like, you don't have anything blocking view. The smileys don't do that. Oh, okay. The smiley Muslims, they split it men and women, but they do it like, men on the right, women on the left, so that we're still equal in space. Okay. Um, but still respecting the culture in regards of being split, so that you're focused on prayer, everyone's looking forward, and okay. not distracted by anything. So, Ismaili Muslims are left and right, not front and back. Hmm. Cool. Uh, what, <laughs> is, what is the halal <laughs> gap? I think I understand it from, a, from context clues, but halal gap, is that like boys stay away from girls a certain amount or something? Yeah, that's the space for Jesus. That okay, that's what I was thinking you. it was. That's exactly what I was thinking it was, Jeff. <laughs> I was yeah. just confirming. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to answer for... <laughs> I mean, you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, exa- that's exactly it. I, it's it's good because they did they did a great job of that scene because I understood everything they were saying, even though I didn't know some of the concepts, you know, or some of the. Yeah, terms. It's like one of those things. It's like I loved it and I want to say so much, but I'm trying to bite my tongue so that I can learn what you guys got out of it to oh, see okay. like how much it's like you're like hitting you're the just, hammer. Yeah, yeah, school. Like I'm so happy to see it, and it's it's just amazing. But at the same time, it's like. What are you guys learning from this? Because um, the DC show that we were covering on Animation Deliberation, um, they had a scene similar to that where Halo was exploring being, like, practicing Islam because she had, like, memory loss. So she was asking her mom, like, why do we wear the hijab? Why do we do things like this? And there was a whole episode that was just dialogue about that. So the fact that, like, within a month or two, I have DC and Marvel having this conversation was just really cool. <laughs> That is, that is awesome, man. It's really, really cool that you're getting that, that much representation of something, you, you know, to connect with. That's super rad. Well, represent Habibi. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, like, it's nice to have that kind of representation in a non-villainous manner, you know? Oh, for sure, yeah. Oh, my God. The dialogue of that agent when he was trying to oh, find yeah, out about terrible. the person, he was like, is it Middle Eastern? Oh, why did it have to be Middle Eastern? We have to be really sensitive. I was like, yeah, he's like, be respectful. The FBI has already got them on surveil. Yeah, it was like, be respectful, <laughs> but also Ooh. don't worry. Yeah, do we've job. got them under surveillance. That is some bull. I, th- I think it was I rather I felt that it was more of a be respectful because they're already going through some shit. Mm hmm. Like they're already having to deal with FBI bullshit. Like, so yeah. let's be nice. Let's play. Let's play relatively nice. Um, I didn't feel like it was like, no, it's fine. You know, just be as nice as you can. But it's cool. I still thought it was. Uh, no, no, I didn't think that either. I, I thought it was more like just scathing uh, indictment of the system of just like, um, he's saying like, yeah, yeah, be respectful. Uh, I mean, the, the FBI's got them under surveillance. Like, 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 it was just like we're talking about being respectful, but also we know our government's watching them. It's fine. Like, it's yeah. like, <laughs> well, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But important that they put that in there, honestly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, that was heavy. That was that was real. That was real scary territory to get into. Yeah, because it right? was like. The, the the feel of like we really got to walk on eggshells for this one yeah it yeah. was almost like why did it have to be them yeah it's yeah. like even talking now damn it still <laughs> even talking us talking about it i feel like i'm like oh i don't i don't know that's terrible yeah. i don't like talking about this but also yeah. it's Ooh. real and like yeah it's terrible but what about what about the cafe when when the when Kamran put on his fake Pakistani accent, <laughs> <laughs> changing subjects. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm one of your cousins, don't you? And he just picked like the most like generic auntie name, and she's like Uncle Chowdhury, Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, that was wonderful. I liked it a lot. <laughs> I was like, and then he was like, oh yeah, I think I do remember you. I'm like, 
Dude. I can't even be Zoo. better than that. Zoo. Zoo. <laughs> You're going to love that. <laughs> that last name that he used is, is my psychiatrist's last name. What was it? Childry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. He's like, yeah, I was, I've just, uh, what was it like uh, the the British best baker, whatever it's called? Oh, the Great British Bake Off. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I was just doing a bit. Yeah, just just finished binging it. So I was like, I fell it. for it. You got me. That was so good. Uh, Sir Dude, by the way, Sir Diggles in the chat says, <laughs> "I thought that agent was trying to be respectful because he is Muslim himself." Oh, interesting. Uh, I did not know that that uh, that actor was Muslim for sure, but I yeah, that's very possible. Do you- do we know that? No, I, I'm saying I did. I did not know that, and still don't. I guess. Um, but uh, rather, I'm I'm asking, like, is that confirmed, um, or is that, that just a? No, I'm just. I think Dougal's is just saying that's what he thinks. Is it maybe a supposition? So yeah. we've got we've got options. We've got options on the board. Yep. We- <laughs> I have so many things written Run down that too. we haven't hit, <laughs> and there's just so many good things. I love the budget, Captain Marvel. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so good somebody finally said it you so know she just talks and talks and talks good it's I like shaking absolutely loved the bad it's bad bad life. bad boys scene make me feel so good walking through the hallway kamala like confident kamala just mm, so good so much fun interesting what are you looking up there jeff sorry dukes sir Dougals, rather doogie uh said he looked it up the actor is from Iran, but the agent's name is Cleary. Okay. Hmm. Don't know. Another cool thing is apparently Nakia's half um, Pakistani and half something else. Yeah, she says she's half white, half Yeah, yeah. she's trying to find the balance of everything. Man, that was neat. I love that we got that aspect. Yeah. You know, yeah. Of, of the culture of like, you know, it's not just these are entirely Pakistani families that are in this community. Like there's integration, you know, the it's weird. The people like each other. Almost. There was even a click. It's like all the, uh, all the converts. Yeah. Yeah. God. That's good. <laughs> the reverts. That's what she, she changed it to, but like that makes sense. You know, like she, it, it, there's going to be children from families that are, are from both, co- both cultures. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. obviously, and the fact that they included that was just like hell yeah, make this world real. Yeah, that's something we did. Uh, we uh, we haven't. It's, it's going to drop in the feed in a couple of days. But we did an interview this week with Anjali Bamani, uh, <sighs> who plays Auntie, Auntie Ruby in the show. Ruby. One of one of the one of the Illuminantes. And one of the Illuminantes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. But one of the things she was saying uh, about this show that's so neat is not only is it showing the experience of, uh, you know, her as a Pakistani Muslim, but a lot of also like all these other people in her community, they're from different backgrounds and different Muslim uh, sort of backgrounds, but like all sort of how they integrate and how they all coexist. It's, it's neat. I had a big monologue about just explaining the geography of just Muslim influence throughout the world over time and just such a fun conversation. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fun and it'll be in the feed this week. Uh, so yeah. just just really, really cool that uh, we got contacted to talk to her uh, as she's doing this show, Ms. Marvel. Super fun. Congratulations, guys. It was yeah, dude, thank you. Thanks, so much fun. Thanks for doing the interview with us. It was it was great. It was a really, really great interview. Um, you guys are growing so fast. <laughs> <laughs> On that talk, though, of geography and you know Muslim influence, um, I loved the the part at the dinner table talking about the partition where, like, it mm-hmm. you know it, it all used to be just India. You know, it yep. used to be Bangladesh and uh, and Pakistan, and then like, and they he talked about how you know his family has been in that city for generations, but her family was new only after the partition and like in I, I i'm gonna i'm going to expose america here sorry america yeah. but like growing up in america you don't really ever learn about the history of individual areas too terribly much no. you really only learn about it as far as how it affected western culture and 
how white people were involved. And that <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Right? So, like... Here's a list of everywhere we colonized. Yep. Nakia calls that out this episode, which I loved. She does. Yes. My History God. is written by the oppressors. That all, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> She's like five minutes on, you know, on Byzantium and, or Byzantia. And there was, what was the other one? She said, crap. I don't remember. That's why I didn't try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't, we didn't learn about you know, there being a civil war in that area, we didn't learn about those things in history because, you know, we're dumb Americans. We only care about ourselves and our our own history. Broad, broad strokes here. Sorry. But it was it was nice to have that, you know, that that lesson that you gave us to be kind of like more ingrained, like, oh, shit, there's, you know, I always thought that while white history was happening, <laughs> Everything else, everywhere else was just hunky dory fine. <laughs> like, they're just background characters, right? No, no, <laughs> that's not at all right. Yeah, it was actually interesting. Um, so, like, I had never had the partition talk with my family, and I grew up believing that it's like your elders just don't talk about stuff, like, you have to find context. So, it's like mm. my Mom doesn't just like openly tell me stories, but if we're with one of her sisters, she'd be like, "Remember when we did this? Remember when we did that?" It's like you have to like like really just shut up and listen. It's like this is the opportunity to like, figure out. So yeah. I called her before the show, and I was like, "I was like, where was uh, Nanu and Nani born? Like, ha- like where were they during all the partitions? So they were young when it was happening because I think it happened forty six, forty seven. It was after right after World War Two, and they were like, yeah, they were born in India." But they had to move to Bangladesh. But then that... So it went from India to East and West Pakistan. So they moved to East Pakistan, which is modern-day Bangladesh. And then that had a partition because East and West were fighting against each other. So then they had to move to Pakistan from there. So when I asked, I was like, oh, because like whenever like me and my cousins asked Nanu about travels, he's always like, why do you want to know? Like We don't have to talk about this. So I said, like, why is it like that? She was like, it was difficult. He had to go through that twice. His family had to go through that split twice. It was a lot. Like, you could try to ask him again and say that you're doing it for the podcast to see if he can give you a story, but it was difficult. So you understand, it was like, I learned about the difficulty from this show before I learned from my family because Mm. I was just, I never got any information, so I never followed up to ask. And this show, like, encouraged me to find out a little bit more about my family. Because on my dad's side during the partition, they just left India, Pakistan altogether, went to Muscat, and then eventually like made their way back to uh, Karachi, which is where I am from, and that is where uh, Kamala's dad is from, Karachi, Pakistan. Mm. That's awesome, dude. That's that's really cool, Zoo. It's cool that you you know you're talking to your family about that stuff, like where you know where you were just talking about. Like I'm trying to be quiet and see what you guys learned from about the stuff from the like we're yeah. learning a lot about. Um, you know these cultures that we don't know much about um culture and you history, are geography yeah. uh, and you and you're you're helping us with that like giving us context and stuff but the fact that even with for you this inspired you to seek out information that you didn't really have yeah. and learn about that's so um that's really interesting and honestly i i you know we were talking about how talking about the fbi thing was uh controversial and it is definitely mm-hmm. not controversial that england w- was colonial <laughs> colonialists <laughs> but like yeah. hearing them talk about like england england really left us in a mess you know what i mean like yeah and like oh, yeah honestly disney is generally like a little more hesitant to be like here 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 like you know china's doing here's a bad thing history. here's an actual yeah. historical event and this country did a bad thing because often it like causes that country to bristle you know like ooh, why are you talking about our bad history um but like they were you know they were very direct about it like yeah britain left us in a bad bad way and like yeah i think that was, that was really neat and really cool that it like inspired you to seek out new information that's about especially yeah, that's, with your family. that's really why that split have you guys seen hotel rwanda no no Oh, um, one of the premises of that movie was that the country of Rwanda was split because, you know, colonizers came in, left it a mess. And then like the whole thing is kind of like you were you were given this title, this name based off like the shape of your nose or something like that. And like a whole war broke out like between like that was a civil war between those two 
types of people because of like physical appearances. Mm. So <laughs> in this time before the British Empire took over India, it was under the Mughal Empire, which is like when Islam was over in India. So when the British took over that, it was basically like blame the Muslims, like they put you in the situation when they dipped out. And the whole split happened where it's like, put all of the Muslims in Pakistan, put all of the Indians in India, or all the Hindus in India, excuse me, and just figure it out from there. And when I was visiting Karachi, I actually got to go to a museum that had like a whole part that was actually talking about the partition. And they were talking about like how like they had to try to make it like least convenient for the infrastructure as they could. So like train routes, it's kind of like, okay, it's the most inconvenient. We draw the lines over here for this territory. Like we have to draw the line here because of this and that. So it's like, it was fascinating being able to read all of that, but it's just so sad and so petty. That's like years of culture. That's like, like one of the original cultures, like it's ancient, ancient yeah. history, ancient structures, ancient, practices to be interfered with so much just because of like gain of power yeah mm. that's absurd i am so sorry I gave that much of a history lesson <laughs> no no, 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 no man. i'm i'm super interested in like finding out more mostly just because i i gobble up knowledge um yeah. and it it helps my trivia brain not me i um, repel it <laughs> Matt's like, get that out of here. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do a real b- big brain dump after we do this podcast. I'm not going to remember anything <laughs> next week. I'll be like, what culture is the show about? We're going to uh, go back to calling everything Pakistan and Muslim next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oof. <laughs> that hurt me to say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm regretting in our feedback episode this Monday. I, I pronounced it Bangladesh without thinking about it. I was like, shit, that was probably Bangladesh. <laughs> Live and you learn. Uh, yeah. What yeah. What, did, what was the other one you said? What What else are we saying wrong? Uh, it's not Pakistan. It's Pakistan. Right. It's not Muslim. It's Muslim. Muslim. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that I do that one right. I probably don't. Muslim. Yeah. It, the The fabric is muslin. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I know I know my fabrics. Cultures of the world. Nope. Dump that information, but fabrics, I'm there. <laughs> Geopolitical boundaries? The hell out of here. <laughs> fabrics? All over it. <laughs> Next week he's Te- gonna be like, Zoo, you're Indian, right? Textiles. <laughs> all me. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they have this great moment where they she he, the father says, That's why we moved to America, so our family could be anything they wanted to be or so our kids could be anything they wanted to be um, almost anything and then her her mother says almost anything and that's shortly before the conversation about aisha and it just really seems like they're driving this home and then they also talk about the illuminantes talk about how she brought shame to their family and killed a man and all of this stuff but also there's that line about follow a trail of stars back to her father like her grandmother followed mm-hmm. a trail of stars back to her father mm-hmm. who while her great grandmother disappeared, and that's Aisha, and so her great grandmother, I, I have a feeling, was somehow guiding her. Right, like we're going to find out that trail of stars reminds me a lot of you know Miss Marvel. Like, like are we going to get a flashback where she's using like creating a trail of stars for her little daughter to run on to like get onto the train? Oh man, I love, I love, love, love the comics knowledge that i have for you for this matt you're gonna i think you're gonna eat this shit up okay i do it but let's let's remember timeline uh aisha disappeared during partition right and uh the 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 grandmother who was a toddler uh kamala's grandmother who was a toddler uh they were getting the on the train like they moved to uh to karachi after partition i thought that was so, i thought that train situation was because of partition was what i the way i took it like they were running from whatever situation they were in and then she got lost in that shuffle that's the way i took it but i don't i don't know well he did say they had it wasn't until after partition that they they came there okay but then they like they also mentioned that aisha disappeared during partition so i'm wondering if the disappearance was her going to another place another dimension maybe another I can train 
marker me for train. No, nah, man, it's that's setting the mood. Oh yeah, yeah, it sets that's the set tone. the mood for this this train story you're telling. There it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe she's going to uh, an inhuman settlement somewhere Ooh, else. Oh yeah, absolutely. To accept that part of the family, like a sanctuary of some sort. Yeah. Almost an, an Atalan, if you will. Mm-hmm. No, that's oh. dumb. That would that'd be interesting. But, and that's, that would be why her mom was saying it's my genetics in the last episode, in the first episode. Right, absolutely. Because ah. it's that inhuman bloodline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I have a few th- jokes I wanted to highlight. Any other like serious things about the episode or big points? Oh, I had uh, a joke. <laughs> <laughs> spoilery, spoilery discussion for later, that's all I've got. The lunar calendar is probably really handy on Adelan. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they use. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look. You can see the full Earth. And- oh, one thing I wanted to say. I just did not trust Comron from the very beginning. I know you were saying you liked that it. it was a, a jock guy, but still, he was too perfect, and he was too, like, she was just too swept off her feet. I was like, uh-uh, I don't like Comron. I think Comron's a bad guy. <laughs> The whole time. <laughs> yeah, I love all the similarities to Never Have I Ever in the show. Like it, it's yep. like it's like upgraded Disney Channel stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't, I've never seen Never Have I Ever. Is that a Disney show? You show it's a it's on, on Netflix. Netflix. Okay, but it's another it's it's the Miss Marvel story without the superhero stuff. So basically, an Indian girl in America. Like, oh, okay, gotcha. Balancing, you know, the culture and the Western life. I probably watched it, but it taught me about culture, so I brain dumped it. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> the training montage was so much fun. Yeah, and I've noticed that like all of the songs that have been used in the credits and the song that was used in that montage, whether it's in like whether it's song in Urdu or English, have been like very women empowerment. Mm. And it's just such a cool theme that I'm hoping goes all the way through because the 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 song that was on the training montage, like I was listening to on my way to martial arts back, like it just hyped me up. Like it was really cool how they're getting these artists because there was one point where I was scrolling through Instagram and like so many of the the Indian and Pakistani influencers that I follow on Instagram were just like on this Miss Marvel set. So it's great that they're grabbing people who were like good at what they do and just immerse like in the community and just very open about themselves and including all these people and giving them an opportunity to work on the show. It's just, it's really cool to see that I'm loving the music. I get to update my, um, my urban Desi playlist a little bit and <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome for women. It's awesome for kids. It's awesome for nerds. Like it's so good. The show is just awesome. Yeah. I love Find it. out more when we have our interview episode coming later this week. Anjali Didi! <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of love how fragile th- th- uh, Miss Marvel is. I don't know if she's going to like really get good at her powers to the point where she can protect herself and do all kinds of stuff. I'm sure she'll be wonderful. In some of those training montages, when she was like sliding down the light, that started to look pretty cool. Um, but like, I just really love how like bad at, at this she is right now. Um, I... <laughs> It gave me real strong Iceman vibes. Oh, yeah. Ah, a little slide. Totally. Yep, a little slide. A little slide. There's my super suit. No, not Frozone. <laughs> I know, and it made me think of it. Bobby Drake <laughs> from the X-Men. I know, I know, but it's, it's such a great line. It is. It is a good one. Yeah, but she better get it to go. She's going to be running it with uh, Danvers and Rambo in the future. Right. Right? Oh, I, yeah. Or, or or not. Or I'd like kind of love for her to be like still just sort of like, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Everyone has to support her because she keeps tripping up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like, It'd be super she, fun. She does the, the giant fist thing. It's like, it's heavy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, Danvers is like, props her up. Like, nope, 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 nope. You just, all right. Good. You good? Yep. She said it was like an idea come to life this episode. So that's uh, more more Green Lantern uh, things. No, we don't talk. That's too Mm -hmm. much DC in this Mm -hmm. episode. I'm sorry. You did it to yourself. (laughs) We all said it once. (laughs) 
too much. <laughs> um, I really like the line when she falls over. I just loved it so much. I, I didn't really, I don't know what the evil eye is, but I liked that her brother's focusing on something religious because it makes it makes sense with this uh, character. He's just praying. He's like, it's got to be the praying. evil eye. And then he starts praying. And then it just, you know, it's just perfect for their characters. But um, then I love the mom's line. Did you not eat anything or did you eat too much? <laughs> it's like, that's the only two things that can be wrong with my daughter. <laughs> she clearly fell out because of food. <laughs> one of the, one way or the other. This is food. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was holy water or not, but she was, that's typically what she was like sprinkling while her brother was praying that was funny i wish we'd had yelena there to say poser <laughs> oh, uh, God. when she when she does her superhero landing she jumped two feet <laughs> she did it like very much on purpose oh it's so good i love it and it was so great i like she didn't say like all right gotta stick the superhero landing but you know she was thinking it yeah. So like, oh, she yeah. just kind of leaned into it and just like owned it, and I love it. I, I love it so she much. Is full on, full on doing the superhero landing on purpose. Um, <laughs> there was a, some little girl pops into the sh- shot and says, "And the mask shoe thief strikes again," and then just walks off. That little that was girl, one of the cracked me uh, up. She was in the Instacult. Okay. She was one of the ones that had the phone. She was, hol- that line delivery was just hilarious. I don't know why. I lost it. I lost yeah. it. It just like, it was, she had all of the um, character of a main character. You know what I mean? Like she, we've yep. never seen her yep. before. Like I'm sure she, we saw her in Instant Click, but like whatever. She's not like had any lines, but she just comes in and says, Mosque Shoe Thief strikes again. And then just like bounces out of the shot. It cracked me up. Man. Yeah. She grabs her shoes and is like, <laughs> says line. And I'm out. <laughs> it's just really good delivery. I still remember the first time my Pokemon shoes were stolen. A rat bastard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that son of a bitch. How old were you at that point? Uh, seven, I think. That rat bastard. That rat bastard. <laughs> I think that's what influenced me to be a tall Pakistani. It's just so I could hide my shoes. Like, I just, just lived yeah. in fear of my shoes being stolen ever since. You're like, you're like a giraffe, like, you know, getting taller. Yeah. But- <laughs> Exactly. To reach the oh, so evolved, that was actually, evolved just to hit the high. Yeah. That what that's been my nickname at my con ever since I grew up. And one of my friends that I grew up with was in the chat last time. And when you guys said like, I wonder if zoos ever snuck out at night, he went in the chat and said like, it's hard for a giraffe to sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so does anybody else get confused at the fact that she's cosplaying as Captain Marvel? No. No, I like sometimes when I'm thinking about her and Bruno and their fandom, I'm like, they're Marvel fans. Clearly, yeah. they're Marvel fans. <laughs> Obviously. But it's just very straight because it's, it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's in universe. They're fans of the Avengers. But I keep getting like, like it keeps being too meta for me. <laughs> like it keeps oh, being yeah. like, she's in they're the- not, they're not MCU fans. <laughs> exactly. They're Avengers fans. Exactly. Like, We're Marvel fans. How are they Marvel fans? Yeah, exactly. How am I watching Marvel <laughs> okay. fans in a show that I, I'm a fan of? <laughs> I thought you meant they're Captain Marvel fans. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I get. I don't no, understand no, no. what you're missing. <laughs> I keep thinking they're like Marvel Comics fans. <laughs> yeah. And the fact I that her cosplay now. Mohawk actually glows is so cute. It's so good. It's so good. You oh, know Bruno did that. gloves, did she? The photon gloves? No, she left him yeah. in the bathroom. He can make more. At Caltech. He was able to analyze the energy output from her body. Mm. Like he can make more photon gloves. <laughs> yeah, I love how all the heroes have like such a good tech sidekick. Like it's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> There's always just like, also, I have a genius with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Jeff, drop some spoiler, some comic spoilers on us. Okay, so in Yon Comics, Kamran is also an inhuman but he's a part of the newer ones that were activated by the terrigen bomb that uh black black agar boltagon you may remember that name <laughs> anyway um the the terrigen bomb that that black bolt detonated and like you know tried to activate a bunch of latent inhumans to help defend against thanos those that group was called the new humans um in you humans anyway so he was one of those activated at that time same time that kamala was but he was recruited by uh someone with oh god some weird powers 
but they were basically the leader of a gang. Uh, but they, uh, their name was Lineage. They're very, very obsessed with ancestry. Okay, follow me on that one. Right, right, right. <laughs> Makes sense. Lineage was a dude. Doesn't matter. Could be changed to be anybody. But Lineage was very much ingrained in the inhuman royal family. Like, good friends with Maximus, uh, served Queen Medusa, um, like, had a lot, of, a lot of things to do with Black Bolt, like, a lot of ties to inhuman royal family. Um, but also kind of ran a gang, like a crime family, before becoming lineage. Um, so, there's probably, like, that's where the money comes from for that car. They probably have uh, some amount of um, there was probably some amount of crime that was, or money being gained through illicit means, I would assume, during the five-year gap, or the five-year blip, that led to that. Okay. Just, just a thought on it, but, um, so, that's, that's the, the origin from, or that's, that's those characters, and that's what I'm thinking is, is coming up. There's so much focus on the, the mother's family and the lineage there. Yeah. And, you know, that, that kind of leads me to, well, this is obviously this interpretation of lineage who is going to be obsessed with the family and like trying to get, cause like there's a, there's a thing that lineage can do that'll like commune with ancestors and like take them into his body and gain their power and gain their insight. And they like have a face on his body that he can converse with. It's weird. It's really freaking weird. But, like, he can absorb people's astral forms okay. as well. Um, really weird. So I'm wondering if there might be some, like, you know, reach out, like, activate the bangle, reach out to your grandmother, I need your ancestor to gain that power kind of thing. It's like, oh, I really like that. Like, that says a lot for, like, stuff that they could do in the future, too. Yeah. Speaking of future, uh-huh, time travel, uh-huh. right? <laughs> On a molecular level. It's been explained that the way that Kamala's power works is that she is able to share mass, the mass of her body and her cells, with other versions of her throughout time. So, like, when she embiggens or whatever, she's taking mass from other points in her timeline, basically. She's taking that mass to, to make herself larger. Weird. And when she becomes smaller, it's she's giving mass to other parts of her timeline. Weird. That's interesting. So it's being loaned out? Kind of, yeah. yeah. But like only for herself within the within her own timeline. So like there's the potential for some Loki tie in with Sacred Timeline. Uh with the way that timelines are, but like but also, you know, <sighs> the like the 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 ish or the the focus on family and lineage it might be a shared power or a a shared thing between members of the family or from members of the family within the timeline rather than like her cells right gotcha gotcha so maybe a, a, a change of that rather than it being her cells for herself across her timeline it may be a power sharing across the family Okay. And that might be what lineage wants to absorb is that power. Like I want to take all that power from your family. Okay. Cool. Hmm. That's interesting. So what is uh so lineage uh, absorbs people in a in a bad way. You said you said he like can yeah. contact the ancestors. So he's absorbing yep. people's ancestors and like consuming them well, in some way, like getting power from them. Absorbs the power of and like the from- inhuman aspects of those family members okay you were talking about faces on this body and stuff so i was thinking it, like, you're right right also and they absorbs like them somehow right yes yeah like absor- absorbs their consciousness and like they have a face on his body that he can talk to that is gross i don't like it's it. weird i do not and like that at all i'm sorry that you brought that to us jeff <laughs> there's there's also like there's other characters that have been absorbed by him uh like karnak got like his astral form got absorbed so like he was no longer part of himself basically he was absorbed into lineage and 
they can be freed from lineage's control as if they're killed on lineage's body so like that face has to be murdered basically weird that is a weird superpower it's such a weird power and it sounds weird i wonder, i don't know if they're doing that here but uh but yeah, something that to that effect that. maybe something to that effect I, maybe i think the the idea of the absorption of family lineage powers that's possible is yeah absolutely possible yeah absolutely so the the bangles that uh kamala wears in comics before they are fused into like one that she wears on one arm um they're fused into one by bruno which is funny like he combines them all together and they have like secret compartments in them so like she can put her phone in there and <laughs> you know her various other effects that's awesome but the the bangles were originally worn by her grand or great grandmother aisha uh but her great grandmother used them to smuggle money out of bombay during the partition oh wow wow yeah and her uh do we did she have similar powers did she have powers aisha in the comics do we know about aisha in the comics at all i don't know okay like all all i know is that her great-grandmother who has that same name as the character in the show used those to smuggle money okay cool all right sweet well i dig it um well guys yeah uh we'll be back soon we got that interview coming up uh so please stick around for that and uh zoo tell them about animation deliberation all right animation deliberation podcast where we take action animation seriously but not too seriously we just finished up our coverage of young justice oh my god was that season finale wild uh could be doing a little bit of feedback on that we are watching Lightyear this weekend because that's hit in theaters so we will have a reaction to that and then the Baymax series is coming out soon. That's going to be a weekly thing on Disney+. Plus. It's a little bit of Marvel, so if that can get you to come over, Stan Lee cameoed <laughs> in the movie, so just hop on over and chat with us on anything animated. And we're going to have Jeff over for Vox Machina very soon because I watched the first two episodes and now I just want to binge it. It's so and good. And for those who listen, they know that like I try to watch my content as close to recording time as humanly possible. So if I'm watching it and I want to binge it, then I want to get to it soon. So I will be <laughs> annoying about it until that's done. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Are you uh, are you guys also going to cover I Am Groot, the upcoming animated yes. shorts? When does it come out? August 10th, I think. Yes, so we will cover it in August. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... See you guys soon. Lots of other things at strandedpanda.com. Check those out. Uh, Bingers Assemble, we just finished our Jurassic World Dominion coverage. We did all six movies and the Netflix cartoon TV show. So check out our Jurassic uh, World and Jurassic Park coverage. That was a, actually, I had a great time. I really did have a great time with all those movies. Um, and we'll be back soon. Peace. Until next time, true believers. Stay whelmed. Thank you for joining us for the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. Available everywhere you get podcasts, and now a video version streaming live on twitch.tv slash strandedpandatv and available at youtube.com slash strandedpanda. And if you'd like to learn more about all of our other podcasts, geeky projects, and ways to support the network, visit strandedpanda.com.